To understand earthquakes and why some tremblers are more powerful than others, you have to understand the architecture of our planet. If you were to take a cosmic meat cleaver to the Earth and just slice it in half, you'd find that most of our planet really is is a hot, almost molten ball of rock. The Earth's inner core is 750 miles thick, made of solid iron and nickel. But on top of that, the majority of the remaining Earth is made of superheated metal and rock. Most of it's found in the mantle, 1,800 miles of molten rock. That can reach 3,500 degrees, and then there's the tiny sliver that we live on, called the crust, a skin of solid rock that can be as little as four miles thick. The part of the Earth we live on, the crust, is a thin layer that makes up less than one percent of the Earth's mass. Now, if I were to take The Earth and shrink it down to the size of this apple. The crust would be about as thick as this peel, and the molten center we know very little about, except that it's good. Okay, very good. The hot molten middle of Earth is constantly on the move. Hotter rock from the center bubbles up towards the surface. While cooler rock trickles back down, the mantle is a fluid. It's basically molten rock, and if you take something that's hot on the bottom and cooler on the top, it'll convect, and so you get these patterns of circulation where the stuff goes up and then falls back down, and that pushes on the crust. The forces produced by the convection currents on the solid crust is enormous. It's broken the crust into sheets of rock called plates. These plates are on the move, riding the currents of molten rock in the mantle, like leaves in a stream. They're drifting and moving, and sometimes they rub against each other. Sometimes one goes under another one, or one goes over the other one. And when that happens, we here on the surface feel an earthquake. Friction keeps the plates from moving continuously, but that means that tremendous stresses build up as billions of tons of rock smash into one another. Sooner or later, that stress gets to be too much, and the fault ruptures, triggering an earthquake.